Welcome. Uh, welcome to United in Purpose. My name is Mary Bostrom. My husband Ken and I have uh, Ken Bostrom Ministries, where God has given us a mandate to reach the lost, teach the found, and preach the word. Uh, you might be interested in, in more studies about the blood of Jesus. If, you, if, you, if your church is not teaching about the blood of Jesus, you can get some free understanding from my blog site, mbostrom2.com. If you go on the left-hand side, you go down to where it talks about the blood of Jesus, and you click on that little link, and all of a sudden you'll have endless teachings about the blood of Jesus on that site. But in, in two weeks, we are going to get really into what God showed me about the blood of Jesus back in 2008. And that message has helped so many people. So I, I, I don't want us to be ignorant about the times. You know, Gwen Shaw, in her great book um, that I talked about last week, uh, Love, the Law of the Angels, she has so many nuggets in here uh, that's amazing. If you have a Bible study group, it would be great great to do a Bible study around that book. I'm sure you can get it from Amazon or End Time Handmaidens. Uh, the writer was Grenshaw, written in 1979, so it's one of those classics that's still alive. But one thing she said is the blood of Jesus is going to be more powerful in the end time, more powerful than the day it poured from his veins, until it will touch our very bodies. Not only will our spirits be changed, but our bodies will be changed. Our bodies are going to be changed by the blood of Jesus. Isn't that interesting? Now, let's look at, we're talking about the spirit realm. We're talking about the spirit realm here. And, um, If you, if you think about light, now light travels at a speed of 186,000 miles per second. That's per second. So that has a pretty high frequency. So if um, I was a saxophone player in high school, if I would play my saxophone, you would hear me. If I would blow the shofar, you would hear me. If my husband whistled, I don't whistle, but if he whistled, you would hear him. Because that's our frequency in, the, in this natural realm. But if you gave me a dog whistle and I started blowing it, you wouldn't hear a thing. But I would be blowing it so hard trying to get some sound out of it, nobody would hear a sound. And, but every single dog for blocks around would, would be screaming, because howling, because it would be hurting their ears. It's a totally different frequency. Well, if the blood of Jesus has that kind of frequency, the light is 186,000 miles per second. You know, when, uh, when Cain killed Abel, remember God said, your brother's blood is crying out from the ground. What was the blood crying? The blood was crying, avenge me, God, avenge me. You mean the blood has a voice that's heard in the spirit realm? Yes, the Bible says that. But when we come to, uh, to Hebrews chapter 12, it says the blood of Jesus uh, speaks a better thing than that of Abel's blood. You know why Jesus' blood speaks a better thing? Because it's on the mercy seat. See, if, if blood came out of me right now and had a pool of blood here, it would die right away. It would turn black. It would be ugly. Uh, but, you know, Jesus' blood isn't like our blood. His blood is called precious blood. That means you can't put a price on it. His blood is incorruptible. His blood is indestructible. His blood does not corrupt his blood does not die. It, in fact, I, I was reading, I, I was listening, I, I worked for Benny Thomas over in Beaumont, Texas while I was going to Bible school, Wisdom Bible Institute in, in, Beaum in Orange, Texas. And that's another story that you'll hear next week. But I, as I was, I was uh, his tour coordinator and, and I was listening to a CD of, of a pastor from uh, Louisiana. Well, back then it was a cassette. It was a cassette. Some people have no idea what a cassette is, but it was a cassette. And, and he was talking about he went to heaven. He, God had taken him up to heaven, and all of a sudden he heard this drop, and it went mercy, 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 mercy all through heaven. And, and he said every single time that a drop of blood hit the, it was, was, hit the mercy seat, it, it must just continually... Uh, pour on the mercy seat, probably like a fountain or something, because there is a fountain 
filled with blood, you know. But, and so every time a drop hit, it would cry out mercy. Well, the secretary for Benny Thomas came in, and she couldn't hardly walk. Her back hurt so bad. And I had just listened to that message, and, and um, I laid my hand on her back, and, and I said, Lord, let the blood cry out mercy on her back. And I just, and instantly she was healed. Instantly, every single bit of pain. See, that's what an understanding of the blood of Jesus can do. It, it, it's faith in the blood. Faith in the blood. It's not like saying, twinkle, twinkle, little star. I plead the blood, I plead the blood. You need to have a little faith in it. You need to have a little bit of understanding. The more faith you have in the blood, the more understanding you have in the blood, the more it's going to work for you. And the more you're going to be able to stand in a gap for an unholy, uh, unholy group of people. Uh, you know, um, and we'll get into that in a couple of weeks. But that frequency... God hears the blood. God hears the blood. When you plead the blood, he hears that. And, you know, we're not killing animals anymore, and thank God we're not putting blood on our doors and things like that. Thank you, Lord, we're in a different place. But the blood has still never lost its power. The blood is still the thing. It's the, it's the currency in the, in the spiritual realm. It really is a currency. And... Um, uh, I've heard people say that when they're, when they're ministering with somebody that is demon-possessed, um, that, that the, when they say, I plead the blood of Jesus, or I, I ask for the cleansing power of Jesus, they say they hear the demons absolutely scream. You know why? Because the, the blood has such a frequency in the spiritual realm that it'll cause the demons to scream just like it causes the dogs to howl when you blow that whistle. But see, we don't understand it because we're moved with our senses. If we can't see it, hear it, smell it, feel it, then it's not real. But we have got to be more in the spiritual realm and, than the natural realm because our kingdom is not of this world. Our kingdom is not of this world. But we have a kingdom that we're supposed to rule and reign down here. We're like ambassadors sent down here. Um, and so there's so many things. I, I do want to say, uh, I'm sure you've all heard of Smith Wigglesworth. I was reading a story um, uh, last, was it last week or the week before? Anyway, I had to tear the page out of the magazine so I would never lose it. And this came from uh, Believer's Voice of Victory from last month's magazine. And he's talking about Smith Wigglesworth. You know, Smith Wigglesworth was was a plumber. He was not a preacher. He was a plumber. And uh, he had no desire to preach whatsoever. His wife was a preacher. And when he would get up there to say, so, he would fumble so bad, and, and he would do such a horrible job that it was embarrassing that she had to get up there and take over. And um, it says here, one day, Mr. Swiggles, Wigglesworth's wife died. He prayed for her and to be raised from the dead, and she was. Now, if, if I ever die in front of you, don't raise me up, please. I want to go home <laughs> someday, uh, you know, to, to die, uh, to live as Christ, to die as gain. Um, and, and he told to his wife, you're not leaving me, he told her when, when she came back to life. What will I do? He raised her from the dead, and he said, you can't leave me this way. It's like mostly women are crying out, you know, if their men die, what am I going to do? And, and so he's losing his wife, and he's saying, you can't leave me. What am I going to do? And she said to him, Smith, you're going to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I'm leaving. Now do the will of God. Then she laid her head down on the pillow and left. After she was gone, Mr. Wigglesworth repented and repented and repented and repented and finally accepted his call. But that was the only beginning. The, the real change in Smith Wigglesworth did not come until he started getting up every day at 4 a.m. to take communion. Wow. He had a blood transfusion every day. How would you like to have a blood transfusion every day? the life of Jesus just running through your body. Like clockwork, every day he would begin the day remembering his covenant with Almighty God by taking the bread and the cup. Every day he lived under the influence of that covenant, and every day he became more and more bold. 
until finally he became one of the boldest men on earth. He was absolutely one of the most bold people on this earth. You know, he would go into a funeral and mess it up. He would pick up that body out of the casket and command it to live, and that would mess up the funeral because the, bo the body would come back to life. And so that messed it up. Um, last night when I, was, uh, when I was preparing for this yesterday, I came upon an article. Uh, Bob Jones is another one of those great men of God who has gone on to be with the Lord. There's so many people going home. There's so many people that have an understanding of the blood of Jesus that are going on, on to glory. And uh, hopefully they're the crowd, cloud of witnesses that are praying for us because believe me, we need their help. But there's not many people that are preaching about the blood of Jesus. So we need to pick up these truths that they gave us. And this is called... Um, Nothing but Jesus' blood. And I think you can go online, Google it, or put in a search engine, Bob Jones, nothing but Jesus' blood. And it should bring you up to, uh, to the, uh, it, I, I printed it out, it's two pages. And he said, Bob had a vision of a sword of light and power. It was like uranium power, like a nuclear weapon. It was so powerful that nothing on earth could withstand power. He saw the sword hanging on a blood red wall in a square room. The other side of the room was green. Bob was told it was time for the sword to be released and it will only be released in the blood red moon from where it hung. The blood red moon represented the blood of Jesus Christ that the church no longer preaches. Well. That's been a long time that Bob's been gone and the church still isn't preaching about the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness and contains all power over the enemy. I want to stop here. Do you know, the enemy can use worship. He can, he can mess up worship. All he has to do is start messing, putting spirits of lust, spirits of pride, different things in, into the worship service. And all of a sudden he messes up the worship. He can change the words until I want and I feel and I just want and it's all about us and not, it's not about him. He can mess up the worship. He can mess up your prayers by, um, uh, by getting you into just uh, nothing from the heart. Just everything being read and it's nothing from the heart and it's no word and uh, God, I just need this. God, just make me rich. God, just... Um, uh, just give me a day off. You know, God do this, God do that. I, he can mess it up. You know, he can take, hasn't he taken, hasn't the devil taken up the word of God and, and just, uh, you know, messed it up. So this religion, they take one verse and, and make their religion off of that. And another one, you know, they, they, they met, the devil can get up there and mess with the word of God. But you know how many weapons he has against the blood of Jesus? None. None. He has no weapon against the blood of Jesus. And that's why we have got to use that as one of the, uh, the mightiest weapons of our warfare in these last days. And he said the green wall represents inspired teachers. These teachers are going to begin to teach the blood of Jesus Christ and how there's nothing more powerful in all the earth than the blood of Jesus. Nothing more powerful. You don't want to think of, of, of light as a power. I'm, I'm, I think of a laser, laser beam. Laser beams can cut. I mean, it can cut the mightiest things. It just goes and cut down. And uh, light is powerful. Light, light is one of the mightiest forces. Um, and then he says, it's time to plead the blood of Jesus over all viruses that are coming and spirits of death. It's time to get back to teaching about the blood and pleading the blood of Jesus over our lives, especially over the viruses that are coming. These viruses can only be taken out by the blood of Jesus. It's time to plead the blood over our houses because the enemy cannot enter in past the blood. When the blood is on the lentil of our houses, none of these death spirits can trespass. The death spirit passed over the houses of all those who applied the blood to the doorpost on the night. It came to kill the firstborn in Egypt. Now, um, 
my, my travel partner, Pam Beery, and you're going to see her on one of the shows real soon, um, she, her, her brother just died uh, Tuesday. Uh, we're recording this Thursday, so two days ago her brother died. So she, her and I were going to go to a minister's conference up in Fort Worth uh, next week, and I had to call up and cancel. And I, when I call up and cancel, because I, I, I'm not able to go alone on that trip, uh, when I called up to cancel, uh, the person I talked to on the phone, she said, I am amazed at how many people are calling up and canceling because there's a death in the family. And we talked about, I knew that there was a, a computer glitch that they were, they were having problems with. They had totally overbooked the conference. And so, it was, it, you know, they're, they're not going to miss us. They're actually going to have a seat for somebody that, that has been overbooked. But all of a sudden, there's a whole lot of people going home. David Ingalls wrote a song, uh, There's a Whole Lot of People Going Home. And it goes, there's a whole lot of people going home. By the signs of time, it won't be long. In the twinkling of an eye, we'll all be gone. There's a whole lot of people going home. And it's just kind of strange right now. I'm not hearing it from one person, I'm hearing it from a lot of people. My husband was saying, he works with a lot of elderly people and he was supposed to make a, he's a hearing aid um, uh, dispenser fitter. And he was supposed to deliver hearing aid and uh, the woman had just gone home to be with the Lord on Sunday. And so there's a lot of things, a whole lot of people going home. And so there's a lot of, it's, it seems like it's just a, a spirit of death that's going on right now. But if you, if you look at the news, we're having a spirit of, we're having a lot of flu. They, they said this is one of the worst flu seasons in history. So here, um, I want to read to you what Bob Jones in, in this has to say about uh, serpents and scorpions. It says, uh, behold, this is from Luke 10, 19. Behold, I've given you authority. Now remember, kings in a kingdom can give authority. They, they give authority to whomever. Uh, give you authority to pow and, and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions and physical and mental strength and ability over all the power the enemy possesses. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And uh, he said, Scripture clearly speaks that the Lord is giving us authority over serpents and scorpions. That authority is the blood of Jesus Christ. Here again, it's one of the weapons of our warfare. And it's like if you're going out to fight a battle, and it's like, okay, I, I have my bow, but the arrows are at home. I don't know where my arrows are. You're, you're kind of going to be kind of good for nothing. You know what I mean? Your bow's not going to do any good. And... Um, he says, many years ago, we prayed about the meaning of serpent and scorpion. We found that when a serpent strikes at you, it represents death coming to assault you. However, when a scorpion strikes you, it can mean that major sickness is trying to fall upon you. Uh, there is a solution and it's authority in prayer using the blood of Jesus. He said, recently I saw there were two plagues coming up to the global nations, especially the United States. One plague was influenza, while the other was influenza in nature. Remember that severe illness like influenza is represented by the scorpion. Thus a serpent has been killing through influenza, while a scorpion-like influenza results are severe illness that could kill you. By applying the blood of Jesus, we take authority over these plagues and cause them to die. And then he said, um, we need inspired teachers. We, we need teachers to get back. I, I love to listen to Mark Hankins from, um, he's over in Louisiana. He can teach on the blood of Jesus. I mean, he is right now one of the most powerful teachers on the blood of Jesus. If you can get his book, um, The Bloodline of a Champion, it is a good read. It's, it's, it just stirs you up. It strengthens you. You don't realize how much you ha need you need until all of a sudden it comes out. Because when, when, when pressure comes, what pressure does is it squeezes you. And what's inside of you comes out. And if you've been feeding on doubt and fear and anxiousness and worry and things like that, when pressure comes, what's going to come out? The bad words. 
uh, words of fear, words of doubt, words of frustration. Uh, just it, It's not going to be edifying anybody else. It's just going to be giving power to the enemy. But if you've been feeding on the word of God, you may not realize how powerful you are until all of a sudden you sque- you're squeezed and out of, a, the, the, out, of, out of your spirit you come. I plead the blood of Jesus, Satan, take your hands off me. Oh, I can't wait for two weeks. I have so many stories to tell you about the blood of Jesus that it'll just strengthen you. Um, but one thing, the bloodline of a champion, you know, the, the blood of animals, uh, you know, I, I, I like some of these uh, horses like Secretariat and, and some of these great, great horses. And you know, they, they, they didn't look good to begin with. They didn't look good, but there was something in their blood. And so when they became a champion, when, when they had won the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness and, and, and um, the triple, um, I forget what they call it, when, when they, when they run the th- won the three, three races, then all of a sudden they began to be very prosperous because uh, people wanted uh, a blood uh, a mare full from the, the the bloodline. They wanted a, a baby <laughs> a baby horse from the bloodline. I'm, I'm showing my ignorance here, but they wanted a, a, a baby horse to be born from the bloodline of a champion because the the champion flows down into the bloodline. And you know the horses that came from that bloodline were champions. They were and and an astronomical amount of money. Well, let me tell you, we have the blood that comes from the champion of champions. Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, has won the battle for us. He has redeemed us by the blood of the Lamb. He has cleansed us from from all unrighteousness. He has sanctified and put us apart to, to be used of him. He has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light by the blood. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You know, do we sing those songs anymore? Do you know on YouTube, I, I, I love YouTube, YouTube because there's so much free stuff on there that you can use. There's sometimes there's, um, there, yeah, you, can, you can do a search on YouTube and uh, there's like 500 blood songs, the blood of Jesus songs, that you can just set set it to play, and it'll just play 500 songs at coming through your house in the blood of Jesus. Uh, there's times there was there was one time when um, you know you got you kind of got to work with the blood. It's just not going to do anything all by itself. You know, I had been teaching about the blood of Jesus, and and I was having um, I, I help a lot of ministries. Uh, a lot of missionaries, uh, a lot of people that are in the field. My husband does too. He's over the South uh, Gulf Coast here for World Ministry Fellowship. He's over ministers. And um, one time I was just having a lot of trouble with 501c3 and the state of Texas. I mean, I would sit on there for hours. I'd finally get them on the line, and, and somehow I'd drop the call. And then I'd try to call back, and the office would be closed. I, I, I got frustrated. I, I would work with it for a couple weeks, and, and uh, you know, I, I finally get somebody and get cut off, or, or, or you know, they would be going to call me back, and they never call me back. You, you know how those things go. And it's, one day I was sitting at the desk, and it, you've seen that commercial like, I should have had a V8. You know, it's like, Duh, I, sh- I, could, I, sh- I should have had a V8. And you know what I said? I should have pleaded the blood of Jesus. So what I did is, is I went, to, here's how I sat on the computer. I went, I just sprinkled the blood of Jesus over this thing. I just sprinkled the blood of Jesus over this computer. I sprinkled the blood of Jesus over this phone. And I command you, Satan, you take your hands off of it. Do you know I had an answer in five minutes? I picked up the phone. I got to the right person. We got everything solved for the missionary that was over in Nigeria. Uh, we got everything solved within five minutes, something I had been frustrated with for two weeks. But see, you got to speak it out. And, and what, you know, I, I get calls from people when I teach the blood of Jesus. Um, 
do I plead the blood on this, or do I sprinkle the blood, or do I wash, or do I draw a bloodline? Um, you know, what you do is you put in an understanding of the whole thing, and when you're squeezed, what, what you need is going to come out. The Holy Spirit is well able to help you. You don't have to do it all on your own. Our responsibility is to renew our mind. Our mind cannot be in this carnal world. In these last days, the Word of God says, um, and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. You know, I, I like that part, they loved not their lives unto death. You know what? People that have an understanding of the last days that we're in, they have an understanding of the blood of Jesus. They are bold, and they're strong, and they're courageous. They're not going to back down in fear. They're not going to be wimps and cave in at the first bit of pressure. But they're going to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Because it's just like getting a blood transfusion. When you have an understanding of the blood of Jesus, all of a sudden, you get strong, and you get bold. And, it, and it's like there's no force in hell that's going to stop you. You're going to be like that. You're going to, God's going to give you warring angels this year. I tell you what, the more you find out about the blood of Jesus, the stronger you're going to be. Uh, the, the more powerful you're going to be. The more peace you're going to have in your home. Uh, the more answered prayers you're going to have. Why? Because what can wash away our sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now, I just want to bless you. I just want to bless you today. You know, um, we, our words are powerful. And when you say something ugly to someone, that, that sticks with them. You know, the word of God, some people say, well, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt you. Yes, they will. Words are powerful. By your words, you can, you're justified or you're condemned. Life and death are in the power of your tongue. And so I want to speak life on you. I say that Lord bless them, bless these people, and keep them, preserve them. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Not the world, not the world's kind of peace. Give you his peace. The peace comes, that comes down from the Prince of Peace. The peace that you find as a, in, as a citizen of the kingdom of God. The peace that knows that, that you know that you're loved. The peace that, that you know that God's got a plan for you. It's a good plan, it's not an evil plan. And he will give you a success in whatever you put your hands to. He wants you to come to him. Come to him today, you will not be disappointed. Bless you, have a great day, amen, bye-bye.